So you're new to airbrushing and you have no idea which airbrush to buy? Well, in this video, I'm gonna help you figure that out. Let's get into it right now. So when you first start looking into airbrushing, you'll notice that there's single action and double action airbrushes. Now, single action means that you'll press down on the trigger and you get both air and paint at the same time. Whereas with a double action airbrush, you press down for air and pull back for paint. The more you pull back, the more paint will come out. The less you pull back, only a little bit of paint will come out and this will allow you to do fine detail work. Now, why would you go one rather than the other? Well, single action will definitely help you out if you wanna do some real basic airbrushing. It is easier to get the feel for. It'll allow you to cover areas quickly. You can do basic blends and you can use it for weathering effects and that sort of thing if you are doing models and RC cars. So a single action definitely has its place. However, if you wanna get really serious about airbrushing, you wanna create some really detailed artwork, you might wanna do some wall murals, you wanna do some work on t-shirts then I would recommend that you go double action again it's harder to learn however when you get the feel for it you'll be able to achieve whatever you wish to achieve with the airbrush the next thing to decide on is whether you would like to go for a siphon feed like this Sparmax SP575 or a gravity feed like this Iwata HPCS Eclipse so with a siphon feed, the paint will be put into this jar. That little hose will suck the paint up through to the main body of the airbrush and the air will propel that paint through the fluid nozzle and onto where you are spraying. Siphon feeds are great if you wanna do larger areas or if you've got to use multiple colors, you'll see these airbrushes used predominantly by t-shirt artists. And they would usually have about 20 to 30 of these airbrushes all with a different color in each jar and they can just pick them up and switch colors without having to clean them. The other thing you can do is run some cleaner in this jar and then just flush it through. So hook that up, flush it through and then move on to your next color. However, you'd still want to remove the handle and do a proper deep clean at the end of the day or if you are changing from a dark color and going back to a lighter one. And a gravity feed airbrush like this Eclipse means that you put color into this color cup. This still can hold a fair amount of paint as airbrushing atomizes very finely and you don't use a lot of paint at all. The paint will naturally flow down into the body of the airbrush with the air propelling it through the fluid nozzle onto your work. Out of siphon and gravity, I use the gravity a lot more. I don't really use siphon airbrushes anymore. I did start with a siphon, a Pash VL, when I first started to learn how to airbrush, and they're still a great airbrush. I just find for the artwork that I do, a gravity feed is a lot more versatile. And the other thing is when you are wanting to do some fine detail work, I like to lay my hand flat like this and get really close to the surface, and this allows me to get that needle up so close that I can get really fine detail even out of something like this 0.35 mil setup on the Eclipse. The gravity feed brush allows me to do that quite easily. Whereas with the siphon feed, you're gonna have that jar in the way. You can see I can still manage to get as close as I would with the Eclipse, but you just gotta get used to having this jar in the way. Some people prefer it because they can hold on to something, but that's something to keep in mind. The other benefit is that because it is gravity feed, you can also work down on your surface. No problem at all. Whereas with the siphon feed, you really need to fill the jar up quite a bit. In this case, I'm just demonstrating with some reducer, but if you only have a little bit of product in the glass jar, then it's okay when you're working horizontally. But if you wanna tilt your airbrush down, then you can see now we're gonna have problems. And you can hear it starting to not come through because that hose now is no longer sucking up any of that product. Okay, so when I get asked to recommend an airbrush to someone who's just starting out, there's two particular models that I like and that I feel are a great starting airbrush as well as something that you're gonna have for years and years to come. So they're not super cheap. If you wanna find out more about a real cheap brush, then I'll link up to a video showcasing that in the description below. But the cheap brushes, I mean, they're good if you wanna just give airbrushing a go, see if you like it. But when you do get serious, you want something that's gonna last. The Iwata HPCS is a great airbrush. The Eclipse has a 0.35 mil needle nozzle setup. Therefore, you can do nice broad spray very easily. Coloring in is not a problem but you can also do fine detail if you wish. 
and doing fine dots is also not an issue. So it's just a great versatile all-round airbrush and one that you're going to have for years and years to come. The next brush that I love to recommend is the GSI Creos PS289, another fantastic all-round brush, 0.3mm needle nozzle setup and it also has the MAC valve which the Eclipse doesn't. This airbrush can also spray large volumes if need be, you can colour in very very easily and quickly, get nice defined lines plus effortlessly create fine detail. So what's the benefit of the MAC valve? So if I press down for air and wind that in, that's gonna restrict that airflow and allow you to do some finer detail if you over thin your paint. And the MAC stands for micro air control. So you can see how that's helping to allow me to get some finer dots. Probably need to thin out my paint a little bit more to really get the performance out of it. And now with that paint thinned out a little bit more, you can see I'm able to go nice and fine. Get really fine dots. and the MAC valve is definitely helping to achieve this. So I think you can agree that both of these airbrushes are pretty comparable. If you want more info, I'll pop some links in the description below. You can also watch both of my unboxing videos on either one of these brushes. I'll put them in the description as well. And whichever one you choose will be a fantastic choice to get you into airbrushing and also carry you through years and years of airbrushing in the future. So to fast track your learning, you can definitely check out our online airbrushing course at airbrushasylum.thinkific.com or you can continue to watch some of the other videos that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.